All right, let's get ready to rock. The Real Kipper and Born Show, Leaf Edition, this hour. Wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, Sportsnet 590, Sportsnet 360, Sportsnet Plus, we're glad you're aboard. And when you can't catch us live, just download us wherever you get your pods. And text us at 590-590. If you got any complaints, send them over to Sammy McKee, Justin Bourne, Derek Brandeo, or Jen Rolnick. Do not let me know about it. I only want positive. And that's what we're getting. Scram beat it. All hour, nothing but positive vibes for the Toronto Maple Leafs. If we went back 24 hours ago, somebody on this desk said it's a scheduled loss. <laughs> Hold on. It's a scheduled everybody loss. Everybody on this desk. No. You. And I Listen, I'm agreed because I was spent by then and <laughs> I such, just wanted to leave and get into my car and go home for dinner. Such an accurate assessment by the end of the show. You could say something absurd and I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Not Timing. even close. No. To a scheduled loss. No. And we had ample reasons to believe that would be the case. Yeah. You know, I'll say, when you are a team with elite talent, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are undeniably that, if you ask anyone in the league, they call them top-heavy or whatever people use to, to say about the Leafs, this sort of thing can happen where they make a couple of plays and shoot it in the net. Like, Willie Nylander making that play with the goalie pulled is like, you know, pretty unlikely it's going to happen. But if he pulls it off, it's a great chance. Pulls it off, great chance they score, and all of a sudden they're off and running. Leafs get their goals. 7-3 to three win in Madison Square Garden on a back-to-back. Three points out of the state of New York on a Monday, Tuesday. Sammy, you did your post-game show with yeah. JD yeah. again? Yes, I did. You forget and the second letter? He, he said she thought JB, he, yeah, JD, yeah, yeah. I'm like, One of those I'm guys. all Jade confused. Yeah, I did. I did. I do it every and, actually every night after uh, yeah. after the game. You can catch me. In and how were those vibes? It was good. It was good. I think I just a lot of surprise. Mm-hmm. I don't think the the emotion that the number one sort of overarching feeling I had out of that game was, you know, stealing money. Like it's just like it's money that you didn't expect to have, and there yeah. you go. Like it's it was a it was a surprising result, but a, a good one nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, you know, like overwhelming, overwhelmed by their play. What were your thoughts on the night? Uh, just in terms of like feeling like you weren't fighting it. And I, I know we're still looking at a, a second period that probably had a lot of people thinking, oh, here we go again. Right. Yeah. Like this thing's going to be destined for uh, an overtime loss. Comfortable at 4-1. They get a couple of late ones. You go into the intermission going it, third period's up for grabs. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't work out that way. No. And, uh, you know, Sheldon had said some stuff and I'm not sure if this is the clip we have or not, but he did say some stuff where it's like, when you go into that second period, it's important to sort of have a reminder for the team. You're up one in a tough environment. You're in a good spot to get points, you know, and, and to not get caught up in the direction of the game. Okay. Let's go to Sheldon key for our first Clippers. Kipper's Clipper on the overview of the win. Uh, I, I thought uh, I thought for a lot of the game we looked like a tired team, quite honestly. But but uh, we we did what we needed to do uh, in terms of building a lead. You know, often when you play in these back to backs, you, you know it, it's tougher as the game goes on. But I think there's somewhat of an advantage early in the game because you just played the night before. You're you know you're you had a hard fought game last night, so you want to kind of ride that while the other team is sort of feeling their way through the game. That's that's what you hope happens. So we built a nice lead in the first period, which, um, you know, our guys did a great job in, in executing and taking advantage of their chances. Um, and then the same thing in the third period there, just allowing us to pull away, you know, starting with a huge power play goal. Yeah, why would anybody think that they weren't going to show up and, and play well against the Rangers? They had their third string goalie who has all but a handful of games in the American Hockey League and a, Save percentage of what eight seventy in the A in the A yeah so is that true back back I, to back I, I, didn't, I didn't really pay close attention back to back anything. back to back games apparently the flu shortened blue line yeah <laughs> this had all the makings into a 
a seven or eight three win for the New York Rangers. That just yeah. did not happen. No, and you know credit to the Leafs. Yeah, like I said, they came out and they scored those goals, but then they Started were able good to tonight. You know, lock it down, get some saves. I, I thought Jones played really well for them. You know, he didn't maybe didn't love every goal that went in, but I, you know, I, the, the first one. Yeah, a little weird. Didn't really know how that one ended up in the back of the net, and he was kind of sliding into the net. But just if you zoom out on where the Leafs are and some of the conversations we were having. I don't know, was it a month ago? Mm-hmm. You know, three weeks ago? I don't really know how long Is this ago. a playoff team? Are they good? Yes. And, like, for legitimate reasons, and for them to have put together this stretch of hockey, like you said, missing t- three of their top six D-men that started on opening night, you know, the, with their third-string goaltender, you know, having issues in the bottom six, you know, talking about what's wrong with Matthews, he's leading the league in goals. Marner, <laughs> it's like, gets two goals last night. It's like... We've had all these conversations, and then they're right there in the yeah. thick of it again. Well, I, did you like? I never thought. That, oh, I did. That there'd be a a scenario where they're fighting for their lives to get in the playoffs. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. No, not I think me. They, I, 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 this. See, they were always gonna. They 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 get their points. They were doing okay. They, they get their points. It's That's so, all I can so say. I've said though. it. I've said it for all season long. This team will find a way to get their points. That's I know, not the issue. Which is the, the most dismissive thing to me. Of it's very tough to get points, you know, on a nightly yeah. basis. And this they is find like, a way. This is Sheldon Keefe's time, is it not? Like last year, they were without Morgan Riley at this time of year, and then they just went on an absolute tear. Like they seem to find their way through. If you do zoom out to your point, Sammy, you know where they're at right now. They're four points yeah. behind the Boston Bruins for the division lead. Yeah, their their record the last 10 11 games is as good as anybody's in the league. Yeah, in the last 15 it it's the best in the league. They're uh they're one point behind the Florida Panthers with two games in hand. You know, they're they're creating some separation from the Lightning who have four more games played and four less points or fewer points. It hasn't been as pretty as probably you'd like to think, but this is know. just a team that finds a way during the regular season. Yeah, so what is the statement no there. there's uh, nothing it's just yeah. it just keep uh, it's the process right it's mm. the process and but there's not much you can do, do differently then like you're saying they get their points in the regular season yeah. great yeah. They, they can win now why is it working yeah, now probably, and it work yeah, later? probably uh it, it's just uh <laughs> it's not just the outcome it's it's the the look or the the 60 minutes or the 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 those windows where it doesn't look pretty that you want to clean up, uh, that second period mm-hmm. you'd like to clean up, that's that's the process that that moves forward now. It's the the optics of the game, not necessarily the end result. And do you think maybe there's something to do with season timing? Like, at the start of the year, everyone's excited, max capacity, fighting for where they are in the lineup, four check, show your coach, whatever. Everything kind of settles in around game 20. And everyone's like maybe a, a, an intensity level down for a bit. I think there's something to be said about that. And that's maybe that. where the Leafs just kind of have more talent than everyone. There's you, you go through what you go through over 82 games, but there's no way that you can predict that you're whatever you do between game one and game 82, that you could absolutely guarantee that your yeah, your is- peak performance will be April on. There's just no rhyme or reason. You just go what you go through and you accept it for what it is. But you can also not get so focused on wins and losses or points or where you end up in the standings because Lee fans have been through that before. Tampa Bay Lightning fans have been doing uh, put well, that before. So it's just about getting yourself ready for the real season in I, April. But I want to stop you there because this idea that it's just like, well, you know, you'll just get your points, you get in playoffs, and then you figure it out. They haven't, they haven't won their division. The only time they won their division was the Canadian year where everything Which, was... It, did. uh, it didn't exist. It didn't happen. That year was just... <laughs> but on a serious note, they haven't won this division. And maybe it's time for them to give a damn about yeah. that as a priority and say, hey, how about we draw, I don't know, the Capitals as an eight seed instead of playing the Boston Bruins in a 2-3 battle or the Panthers in a 2-3 battle? Listen, you won't get an argument out of me. If it's there, take it. Yeah. If there's an opportunity to to win the Atlantic, 
I think we were unanimous before the season started that we believed that the Leafs would be the top team in the Atlantic. We were for sure. Yeah, this, well, for this, sure. This show all had that, that, the best team. In the I said they were going to win the President's Trophy. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this: the, and they, they had still a can last year with a bit more talent you know, offensively. Anyway, it, not defensively. They could find themselves in a battle for 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 top spot. They fought, like again. What were we talking about the last few years? 115 points, 111. Now what are they on pace for? 105, 107, 9? It's up there, yeah. It's up there. Yeah. Like, they are good. They are good in the regular season. The only question is now, how quickly can you get this team to look and feel like the one that you want to start in game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. You know what I like in a back-to-back is when you have 11 forwards, as much as it's hard for guys because you get a bit more ice, you kind of get these unusual looks and unusual, you know, you get Willie Nylander playing with some different guys. Gregor. Yeah, you know, some different guys get some opportunity in a night where they normally wouldn't. Gregor plays over 17 minutes Mm. last night. I don't know that he took advantage I, of his opportunity last night. We, I would we've say talked he's better, about that. We were, ta- <laughs> we were fair, talking okay. about that two weeks ago. That but give just him a little. Throw him a bone, yeah, put him up there. And give him some runway here. Matthew Nyes opinion. is out of the lineup. I'm totally on board on that. And yeah. I, it, it, it's what I expected to see. A guy that doesn't belong up there but won't embarrass himself to, to just yeah. buy you time. Yeah, and I don't even, you know, I don't even know if he doesn't. I, I'm a little more bullish than most people. Like, I, I didn't think he was good last night. I thought he was. Well, he's not a top six player in the yeah, National not, Hockey I, League. I don't know if he well, is. No, I mean, he just, he does he wasn't passing to the good guys. Well, he just, he has no timing with these guys who no, he, he knows he's supposed to give well, it to Well, he was just, him. like, skating up the ice. He was, like, you fire it. it. And then yeah. it's, like, Matthews is, like, standing there, like, maybe, yeah, yeah. you know, this stick here. <laughs> Pass it to me. The, the one thing I give will say. Runway is all I'm saying. The, and the one thing that I will say about Gregor. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, he's he's only 25. Yes. So there, there might be some growth there. Like if he was totally. 32, I would sit there and say, okay, you know what? He, stay in your lane. You are what you are. I, I don't know how much more growth there is, you know, with that speed. But can he think the game? Can he be in a position where he can start making plays yeah. with the likes of Nylander or Matthews or Marner? Not sure yet. Yeah, I mean, but he turned 25 this summer, like a couple that's, months that's ago. That's young. NHL now, today, that's young. And in 2019, he scored 43 times in 63 WHL games. Like, it's not like he has no experience being a top-line guy in his life. He was just blowing past guys eh, and just firing under the bar. See ya. Yeah, like in that <laughs> league, like yeah. that when he scored 60. So yeah. just to kind of, like, we kind of zoomed in on Gregor there, but to zoom back out a little bit, I think the perception of the Leafs, over this era, like with Dubis, was that they were like this high-flying, offensively-minded team, yeah. right? Yes. In the last couple of years with Dubis, they weren't that. Not And, like, I, and yeah, I feel right. like they've brought in Brad Living, and everybody thought the perception was going to be like, oh, they're going to be this more defensive, like, grittier team. And now they're like the scoring team. Can't defend a lick. And they, they <laughs> <Great> score. <offense. laughs> like, they are like a truly, like, I mean, I'm just looking over their last, like, the goal totals they've scored in the last month. They score close to four every game. Like, they are a really, really good offensive team, but their yep. defense, it's like, it's crazy to me how much the perception has flipped and flopped with this team because they now they are, like, the all-offense, no-defense team. Yeah, they are yeah. seven. Which isn't no, not great. a great no, I recipe. Agree. I agree. No. I'm just bringing it up. When you go to, I go to, you know, I always check my sport logic, my expected goals for, expected goals against on the old chart. They are creeping towards the best offensive team in the league. Uh, and defensively, they're on the wrong half of, of middle. You know, they are not very good that way. So they are what people thought they used to be Yeah, at this point. Where it's kind of shifting for me a little bit towards Brad Tree Living and in the snot category is Jake McCabe. Mm. All it takes is a couple of big hits and the feeling changes incredibly. When for you, me, when you're playing against him, you're a little more aware. Oh, yeah, like, like oh. don't tell me that every guy in the league within the end of today will not have seen that hit somewhere on their phone or on a highlight reel here at uh, Sportsnet. Yeah. You know, I did the uh, pre scouts for the Marlies for the teams that we would play, and when you go in, every player has just a note, a note about them. You know, here's something you know likes to burn you wide, or you know something about their whatever. 
for sure. If you're scouting the kid, head up. it's yep. Yeah, you know, head so, up. Uh, you know, he's looking for the big one. He had another big hit Saturday night in against Nashville. Yeah, Evangelista, Evangelista smoked, smoked, him. smoked yes. him. Yeah. And then last night, and now all of a sudden, there's a different vibe when you play against the Toronto Maple Leafs if if McCabe's on the ice, and that is a good thing. That that one last night was as big as I can remember a Leaf hit in a really long time. I saw somebody. Maybe Muzzin. Maybe a Muzzin yeah. hit? No, I I don't think Muzzin had one like that. I don't know. That was Muzzin had a couple. From, that was straight I, from, yeah. like, my VHS, the grapes, like, rock em, sock em when I was yeah. a kid. That was, like, a 1998 tweet, like, hit. If we can see the bottom of your skate, you got rocked. <laughs> like you know? that, dude, so, it was horizontal. For me, if I'm a general manager of a hockey team, one of my prerequisites would always be to have one squirrely low center of gravity defenseman <laughs> who's looking to inflict pain. He, no, is that just like not even him. Like he was more it's like a little gritty face guy that just likes to run into people as hard as possible. Stumba. And that's him. Squirrely's really good for hockey. And he is like <laughs> and he is squirrely. And as soon as Zabinajad comes over to him, Zabinajad did not want to smoke. fight. He immediately <laughs> gloves off, grabs onto yeah. him like I'm loving McCabe. I'm loving that side of it. Okay, let's go to Sheldon Keefe on clip four on Jake McCabe and his decor. I think our team's played better since since he's come back. That's part of it. You know, our game is less uh, is less chaotic than it was when he was uh, in previously. Uh, you know, time to time for him to regroup and and uh, sort of you know and restart his season. Um, but yeah, he's he's been really good, and it's you know like it's whether it's him or you know the guys we have in the back end that have come in here with the injuries we've had. The guys have just stepped up their game in, in key times. It's allowed us to get points here, even when we're not at, when we're not at our best. You know, the guys are finding ways and competing hard. I thought Bobby McMahon comes in, gives us really important minutes here tonight. Um, we talked about Jones. You know, like, guys have been stepping up all the way through. You know, it's not just. Uh, the McCabe's and the guys that we rely on, you know, Riley, Brody, and um, our key forwards, all of that. I think we've been getting really good performances throughout our lineup. Just of note, uh, in what, uh, 12, 13 minutes, we're going to get Jim Ralph, Toronto Maple Leaf Radio Color Analyst, to join us, get his thoughts on last night's game. Oh, my boy BMAC got a shout out from Sheldon. Bobby, Bobby McMahon. Yeah. Working hard out there. Yeah. He's, he's fine. Yeah, he's just, <laughs> to me, he is generic fourth liner in the NHL. They like, yeah, can skate hard. He'll and... take it over guys who are worse than, yeah, you yeah. know, than that. Yeah, I guess. What do you guys think of, uh, like, a Ranger team that, for the most part, getting a lot of accolades this season as a, as a top team, but I did not see that at all. Like, the the access that they gave the Leafs or the Leafs took from them, mm -hmm. depending on how you want to look, uh, like the stick, the stick checking, the easy access. Like I was quite surprised. Yeah, I I think you know going into this year, the Rangers are a good team, but they're not that different from the Leafs in that they're a pretty flawed team, right? Like they, a lot of their best players are one way guys. Zabanajad's not going to be physical, and he's a one way guy, and so is Panarin, and you know I just think a lot of their guys are kind of one way guys. So I don't, their D I, are really good, but the way that they let Nylander walk into the zone on that first goal with the fire pokers. Yeah. I, and that must have sent Laviolette up the tree. He must have been going into that dressing room. He must have killed them. That was not. Perfect. I was like, is you guys allowed to body check? Yeah, I know. Like that's, it was shocking for me to see yeah. a, a blue line that's supposed to have this reputation led by Truba. Like it was, that, that's a Truba hit that M McCabe yeah. Yeah. levied at Madison Square Garden. You know, the, I know that feeling when you're in Nylander's spot, like your goalie's pulled, and if they touch it, the whistle's going to blow, so you might as well try it. Like, there's yeah. no harm in trying something silly, and they just let him through. He's yeah. like, oh, okay. And he yeah, kicked it up to his skate. It was a good play. Goal scorer. Hey, I wanted to ask you something that uh, Bunk has brought up to me last night. I okay, can to... I just, can we just, uh, I want to get uh, the clip on Keith on the Rangers' top guns shutting them down. Sure, sure. All right, save that thought. Yep. I think it's I think it's vital. I think they're they're a far different team when their top people aren't on the ice. Uh, 
and you know that's that's not uncommon for most teams, but there's there's a, there's a great discrepancy with this group, uh, so we needed to manage that that uh, that line. And you know, I think they had their looks, they had their time with the puck, uh, probably more so than we would have liked, but uh, certainly is is a, is a key. Both, and you know, we talked about that. We talked about winning the special teams a battle, or at least drawing even on that. Which they get their power play goal. Uh, we wiped that out with a huge power play goal in the third, and we scored a goal on a delayed penalty at six on five in the first period so you know, you know taking care of that that special teams part of it too is is another really important piece against this team yeah i just saw like for for panarin and panarin's supposed to be have have had this great year so far people have him as a heart right finalist yeah very least did he but play last night did he play last night uh wheeler shot the puck into the net it's a nice goal that was old school wheeler Coming down off the wing, right? Yeah, I know. It was nice. But, you He's know, had a ton. That, that's one yeah. of the rare times the Leafs didn't have a good third man high, and he has Max 190 feet to. Yeah, they, they were exposed with Lizwa there, I thought. Yeah. You know, one of the but, few times it's like, been noticeable. I didn't see, to go out to our conversation last week, I didn't see any alpha dog on the New York Rangers, man. No. I saw nothing out of their lineup. No, like Kreider's getting a little older. Like Lafreniere's not quite there yet. It's. I don't know. They're they're fine. The Rangers yeah. are a good team. I'm not trying to say they're not a good team. Yeah. Great goaltender, but they're I don't think they're special. Unlike the Leafs, Matthews kind of looked like an alpha dog last night for me. Yeah, yeah, he's humming right now. He's league leading goals. Actually, Besser caught him last night. Besser had yeah. a hat trick too. But a couple from him, a couple from Marner. You know, look that that's what the Leafs are supposed to look like. You know, <laughs> go ahead, Sammy. I don't want to like turn it into a negative about Matthews because he's leading the league, but like. Why is it, but like, why was that lull? And when, like, your coach was basically is like, yeah, he wasn't, he's trying harder now and he's good again. You know? Like, he's, he's alluded right. to it multiple times. He had to, like, light a fire under him. Oh, well, sometimes. He's is it just the season's too games. long? Is that what it is? You know, if anyone could do it every night, they'd be, you know. Well, they'd be Austin Matthews making $13 million a year. Right. That's why he does it every night. You're supposed to be the highest paid guy, right? Like it's yeah, like, but they're, they're, when you to, see to Sammy's play, point, there there are some nights where you're like, eh, he doesn't feel like playing tonight. When I yeah see him the way he played last night, yeah, and the night before on Long Island, it's like, what happened before? No, it's you're you're right because it's like you you can give How me that can you be that guy. You can give me like yeah. you can feel what that feels like to dominate at that level in the greatest league in the world, and then come up and be like, eh, you know, part of it though, and this is. You know, I I do think it's like, you know, the consistency factor. You shot, what's your lowest and highest scores on a golf course this summer? Uh, 101 with you was my highest and 76 was my lowest. Same golfer. Yeah, same guy. You know, you know what it feels yeah, like. So. You know, it's just like <laughs> some days it's hard to do the same thing. I think I've told you this before. Colby Armstrong has the best story on Phil Kessel as a teammate in Toronto yeah. where he just I don't have, have it. 20 minutes in the first period, he's. Saying, guys, I just don't have it tonight. <laughs> I just don't you know have funny it. Though about guys like that, it's one might find you guys are on your slot. own. Yeah, I'm, I'm useless to you. Yeah. You guys go on. But that, what a piece. A guy like that might find one and still shoot it in the net. Yeah. And often we give offensive players passes when they shoot one in the net. And like, yeah. they can be terrible all night and they just find one in a good spot. But that yeah. was that was a Willie story for a lot of his career. It or it'd be like these games where he's just a dog and he just Picks up the puck and the slot goes bar down for the OT winner. And you're like, oh, Never well. talks about his goals yeah. per game and we're in here going, yeah. did you watch how bad yeah. he was, though? You know, the one thing that excited me the most about Austin Matthews' game last night mm. is pass to Mitch on the fourth goal mm. was the best pass I've seen him make in his whole career here. That was a pretty damn good pass. It was, no, it bad. was a great pass. And the beauty of it for me is that if this guy can bring that element to his game mm. where he is less predictable on when he shoots the puck, and we know Kucherov may be the best guy on the planet for that. For sure. If he can bring more elements to, to make that pass, he goes to another level. When, yeah. I, when I see Matthews mm -hmm. on pace for like 30 assists or he's sitting like 145 in assists in the league, mm -hmm. and you're the highest paid guy in the league, no good. <laughs> yeah. No good. Yeah, okay. The uh, the one thing I think that <laughs> is... <laughs> what? <laughs> it just kills me. I, I, love, I love your commitment to this. 
no I good. truly respect it. Like no I, good. you know, I I couldn't be com- this make, committed make to make passes this. like that. You're 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 next level stuff now. Well, yeah, yeah you're you McDavid. Trophy doing you're that. You're McDavid. The king that I think where it comes is from. is that not? Well, he's got. He, I mean, listen, he does have 21 goals and 11 assists. Like it's a big discrepancy, but yeah. he's really good at shooting it in the net. Well, and, I think you know that's one thing we heard Keith say the other night is he wanted him to be more assertive with the shot. But Kip, to your point, you know that's where an I, assertive pass. It yes. is, but you know where I think he sees that and where he can pick that up from, Willie. Two assists that Willie has to Neil or to Matthews in the past couple games are him holding one at the goalie and finding yes. Matthews back door, right? Yeah. Like that's the look where you hold the goalie and all of a sudden your point about these guys who are all shooters, if you can also pass Listen, it. the only one over the last few years that's had any type of consistency for those type of passes has been Mitch Marner. If you added now Willie consistently and 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 Austin. I think Tavares will always be that net front presence yeah. guy. He'll never he's not a he's not a disguise. He's not a great passer either, but he is what he he's is. He's a shooter from the blue paint guy. But if you can have three of those guys have that element, yeah. I, I think it changes a complete outlook of yeah. of how mm-hmm. they go about their business in the offensive zone. Well, uh, there's yep. there's just nothing better than a good pass. I, I will always say that. It's the the best part about the NHL is just the passing. And like yeah. that one last night was beautiful. That was slow. Um Okay. Before I forget, I wanted to ask you something. Yes. And Bunkus brought this up to me last night on Lee's talk. Uh-oh. I didn't think about it. No, but he thought the fight after the McCabe hit for the team from the Rangers that, like, all they do is cry every time Truba has to fight yeah. after a clean hit. Yeah. And then they're the team that jumps in after one of the best clean hits. It was, it was a bad look for the Rangers. And I thought, the thought didn't cross my mind, but I agree with him. I, 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 I didn't think the response from the Rangers was very good at all. Well, I don't think there needed to be one. Yeah. It was a clean hit. The guy got up. He they separated the man from the on the Sammy, other side. I have had this conversation with you a thousand times. I don't care if it's clean or not. You're trying to hurt my guy. Mm. That's enough. Don't hurt my guy. How but, about that? But how about that the covers team, it? But the team that's crying all the time about, oh, Truba, oh, I shouldn't have to fight after a clean hit every time. And then there's a clean hit and their whole team jumps on. It's a bad look. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, the um, I wrote an article today up on sportsnet.ca about something that you and I have been talking about, how there is sort of like this, still these old school guys in the league who recognize that physical play is really important. Truba's your guy. Yeah. Jake McCabe has been throwing those hits. They're both 30 years old or, you know, within two months of 30 years old. They're, they're older guys. And then there's a lot of young guys who just don't expect to ever get hit. Mm-hmm. I don't know if did you saw the Eric Robinson hit on Justin Barron of the Montreal Canadiens, yeah. 22-year-old D-man yeah. that they have. He doesn't protect himself at all from this hit that's coming. Like, the, you know, he turns his numbers to it and takes kind of a, in, in a bad spot. The article is about how we're kind of between generations of like these older guys that still want to thump guys. You think it's going to get weeded out here? Well, it's headed that direction, but I think we're at a point now where you have guys who don't think they're going to get hit and guys who still think there's hitting, hard hitting. And so it's kind of, you got some guys who are vulnerable yeah. now and, Lindgren didn't think for a second that he Listen, was going to Lindgren hit him. plays the game he, hard too, right? Yes. Oh, he throws big hits. I was, but he didn't believe anyone I was, was going to hit him. I was shocked there. that he drops. He's looking it, at the base. And, he, and he's looking over oh. his shoulder, trying to admire his drop pass. Man, the I was must shocked. Have been just licking his chops. That's like, like oh my Christmas God. dinner. Oh my God. <laughs> like cranberry, it, oh yeah. and gravy. Yeah. It's like when, you know, as an offensive player, you can see you're about to get sprung for a breakaway. I imagine that's what it's like for a demon yes. to see someone on a tee. It's just and, like, oh, boy. And I guess to the point of why there's these fights after the clean hits is that there's so little contact now. These big bangers are such flashpoints in the game where it's like, yes. oh, a guy's like, oh, my God. Like, that can still happen, and they're immediately yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think you, you, where you, you're like, you nailed it right there. Where it's like, you're so not allowed like, to do that. And it's like, no, you very yeah. much yeah, are. That's Literally, the point. Yeah, he had the puck. playoffs, people do it all I know. the time. I know. David Camp will tell you Radko Gudis yeah. hit him pretty good. Ask Slavin about Sam Bennett. Yeah, about Sam Bennett. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Choo-choo. Pretty much anyone on the Panthers, really. <laughs> yeah. Just don't go sniffing around there with your head down. Right. All right, we're going to take a quick break, Sammy. Yeah, let's do it. Sounds all good. All right. More Real Kipper and Born after the break. Jim Ralph, the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs, coming up next. Okay, let's welcome in Jim Ralph, Toronto Maple Leaf Radio color analyst. Ralphie, how are you, man? Oh, man, they make it easy for you and Joe Bowen on a night like that, uh, what we saw at MSG. 
Yeah, you guys usually only have me on after losses. So, <laughs> so this will be fun. <laughs> You're a ray of sunshine, Ralphie. We wanted we wanted to hear you the, the, all the positive things. What uh, what was your major takeaway from their uh, beat down of the Rangers? Uh, well, I mean, a, a part of it is uh, Igor Shesterkin. I think that's uh, three games in a row he's had a tough outing. Mm-hmm. So, it, um, you know, I, I think that plays into it a little bit. But, um, you know, I like the I like the fact that. Uh, the power play came for, through for them in the third period. Uh, you know, after the Rangers scored a couple to make it four three, I thought that's that's one of the things that that's sort of been hidden and you know all these blown leads and um, you know sometimes in different plays is, is the power play can be so huge at certain points in the game and and um, I thought it was huge that they came through and the the, the Marner goal really the, not only came through but uh, actually results from a point shot being deflected with guys in front. I thought I thought was a pretty unique way of going about it. Doesn't seem like a seven uh, three score is indicative of still maybe a game that could be up for grabs going into the third period. Obviously, they're, they're, the offense took over in, in the third, but uh, still the feeling that maybe it's it's tough to string together consistent sixty minute efforts that that look good. But the one thing that is consistent. If you're playing the Leafs, and that is Ralphie, you can't sleep on their offense, man. You just you're asleep for five seconds, man. They're going to bury a puck on you. Yeah, and, and you know it's funny, you know they uh, Keith splits Marner and Matthews up, and yet every time they're on the ice together, whether it's the power play or you know the the, the Marner five on five goal, it's Matthews and Marner that seem to be uh, creating the magic. So you almost wonder if if that part of the offense isn't going to be put back together out of necessity. And um, but, but you're right. I mean, whether it's you know Nylander's run at the start of the year or Matthews, it seems if he gets one, he gets two or three. Um, you know, they've you've seen it. You know, late in games that they've been able to come back and get something out of it. And you know, the Islander game on Monday night was the latest example. Rafi, the Leafs' decor right now seems to be three guys that will be a part of their team in the playoffs. Obviously, Brody and Riley and McCabe. And then three guys you're not sure will be there if you have Lilligren and you have Giordano and who knows who else. What have you made of the three guys, um, Benoit, Lagaston, Lejoie, and Timmons, actually four guys, I guess, that have been playing fill-in duty? Yeah, I, you know what? I think they've been solid. Um you know, to be fair, I think there are, are moments where you notice where you say, okay, this is why he hasn't been a regular in the NHL, whether mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, Benoit or, or Legas and even where you say, you know, there's there's something there, but there are those moments where you say, you know, the failure to get it out or uh, the failure to make the little play that doesn't create the hornet's nest in your own zone. Um, but, you know, I, I think they've, uh, they've filled in admirably. I mean, I think that's exactly... You know why you want to have depth on the blue line, and you want to get guys that have some NHL experience. And um, you know, I think that's showed well for them. But I, I think overall, at, at times, they've been much better in front of their own goaltenders as well. Maybe the last five or six games that um, makes everybody look a lot better. We're talking to Jim Ralph, Toronto Maple Leaf radio color analyst. There's got to be an appreciation uh, for Martin Jones, Ralphie coming in cold against Ottawa and then, you know, holding the fort, I guess, last night for a guy that's played a handful of games in the American Hockey League and didn't exactly light it on fire there either. Hey, well, there's nothing wrong with not lighting the American Hockey League on fire. Look look where it's gotten you. Well, no, it's not about me. But, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think you love the fact, and I... I think he gave them what they needed, which is just don't give up that one that that looks bad, that's going to sink the team and and put you behind. And, uh, you know, I I think so much, you know, you watch the highlights every night or you watch different games, and it's amazing how many times the game has turned on that one goal that you're going, you need to save there. And, uh, you know, I I think the way you always look at a goaltending performance or a goal against where you say, okay, if he stopped it, would that be considered a great save, an outstanding save? And if the answer is no, then it's one that you're thinking, Ben, you, you know, you got to have that. And um, I, I thought with Martin Jones, you know, even when he went in the, the final 10 minutes against Ottawa, uh, it, that never happened. There was never that goal that you went, oh, no. Um, you know, I, you know this, this might change the momentum of the entire game. So 
that's what I really liked about it. He, he stopped everything he should have stopped and, um, you know, throw in a couple of breakaways that he had in the second period as well. Has something changed for you with this group? Like there was a point we had a show maybe a dozen games into the year. Maybe Kip wasn't on board, where but Sammy and I had the like, is this team good conversation? And all of a sudden they're four points out of a division lead here and don't, you know, there's not too many teams ahead of them. You feel like they couldn't catch. What's changed for them to have so much success of late? I don't know. I mean, I mean it's baffling that I think the, the loss in Pittsburgh is their only regulation loss in what is it, the last 11 or 12 now. Yeah. And, and it, it's just funny. I think because all of the games, though Borney have been so close mm-hmm. and can go every, you know, and that's why last night, you know, seems to stick out with a 7 3 win in New York. But every game is so close. You, you don't feel like they've, they've been as good as they, they've shown in the standings. Where you think, well, you know, if the overtime record's reversed or, um, you know, if they didn't blow this lead or, um, you know, if they didn't self implode in this game, um, we'd think they were a better team. And then you you look around the league and you're going, Prince, you're four points back of Boston now yeah. and have lost to the place in overtime. So it, um, it, it's, it's probably just part of whether you're covering the Leafs or you're a Leafs fan. Um, you know, you, you, you do get to that point where you think that uh, every game is based on how they play and has nothing to do with the opposition. But, you know, obviously you see other teams around the league have their own warts. Um, we just don't care as much about it. Ralph, we were talking earlier about uh, uh, Jake McCabe and this week, a couple of games, we've seen some really big hits. Uh, what do you think that does in terms of changing the perception of the Leafs when you see some of those uh, those big hits? Well, Kipper, I think you can go back to our era where if you drop, if you get over the line and you drop the puck back, don't turn around and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> You know that. Yeah. I mean that's that's something that that rule has been around forever. But it was, uh, uh, you know, it was a clean hit. But I mean, I, I I do think you need, you know, Luke Shen was brought in for that reason last year. You need somebody that uh, uh, occasionally has to stand up and and make that big hit. You know, sometimes you get caught and then you end up giving up an odd man rush because of it, even if it gets your guy. But uh, I, I think you always want to make sure the opposition's coming over the line with their head up. And, um, you know, for, you know, some players, you know, handle that a little better than others. But I think it's great to have that threat that, um, you know, you've got that, that toughness. I mean, Jacob Truba, um, who seems to have a credit card from the National Hockey League, um, you know, that's, that, that's what you see every second night is another big Truba hit. And you better believe guys are aware when he's on the ice. Yeah, no, it may, makes a big difference. And for a Leafs team that doesn't have that reputation, nice to have that element to it. Um, you know, the the Leafs get by, I think, last night, you know, maybe not the dominant team, but they just have the elite players, right? And uh, Matthews and Marner, uh, fun little stat here. That's the 69th time that they have scored in the same game. And the Leafs are 64 and 5 in, in those games. Is that, so, is that a good record? That seems Robbie? okay. <laughs> So, uh, well, yes, uh, of course, you must have got that off the broadcast last night because that's where it was heard first. Is that right? Was that uh, you were you looking that up, Jimmy, doing your uh, yeah. some Googling? Yeah, that's, you? Why, that's why I missed the last four goals. <laughs> <laughs> so g- give me your thoughts, you know, on this Leafs team. People call them top heavy. Like if those guys are humming like that, you can be top heavy. It's not such a criticism, is it? No, and, and you know what, the, the guy, I, I don't know if you guys are going to bring it up or not, uh, I'm a huge Noah Gregor fan. Yay, uh, me too. And, and it was it was great to see him move up. I think he was over 17 minutes of ice time, uh, made a great feed to Austin Matthews for a chance, I think it was in the first period. And, um, you know, he's he's got, a, I think he's got a very underrated shot. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you see his speed, he can be physical. And, um, you know, whether he ends up back on the fourth line or not, I, I thought Camp and Bobby McMahon spent a little too much time in their own zone. I know they were, you know, it was kind of a makeshift um, fourth line by dressing the 7D. But I just think, uh, you know, if you if you can get those bottom six guys to produce, even Camp, what, three, in, three goals in his last four games, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I think you absolutely can ride your top two lines. But, as long as your uh, your third and fourth lines are playing even or a little better, um, I think that's what sets you up. 
The other thing I wanted to ask you, Ralphie, when it comes to Austin Matthews and our, our boy Sammy kind of brought this up earlier in the show is like what, what goes on those seven or eight games when there's just a lull in his game? Is it strictly a matter of uh, focus, hard work? What do you see on some nights when it doesn't appear that he's one of the top players in the world? Yeah, I, I mean, there are, he does go through the, those stretches, Kip, where you say, God, he could have had three or four tonight, and nothing went in. Uh, and then you're right, there, there's games where you're going, I'm not sure he had a legitimate scoring chance. And that, you know, you start looking at other guys around the league. When you start going, you see, you know, Brady Kachuk's got five or six two goal games. Uh, in only two games where he scored one goal. So it's um, it seems to be the uh, – you must have gone through that well in junior anyway. Uh, for, uh, a few times. Up for, up for five or six games. A few and, times. You know, then it dries up. I know in the, the American League I never saw you score, well, that one hat trick, but that was about it. You guys know that, eh? My only professional hat trick came against Jim Ralph. Yes. <laughs> we did know that, and I love it. I got it on the side of the building here at Rogers, Ralphie. Hey, well, I'll give you a worse one. In, in the minors, Brett Hall scored his 40th, his 45th, and his 50th on me. <laughs> in the same game? Um, oh, same game, yeah. So that was that was, that was worse than Kipper's three. <laughs> so how do you handicap their chances then? Uh, you know, looking at the division... You know, what is this team for real? Like, are they as good as the Bruins or the Panthers or Red Wings, Lightning in the chase group here? Uh, I mean, I, I still think um, you got to believe that you've got to upgrade your blue line. Even when you get Giordano and Lilligram back, you know, I think that would be the um, uh, the number one concern if, if you're going to go on some kind of extended playoff run. And um, so I, I still think, you know, the up front, I think they're fine. Uh, I think you've got different combinations you can play with uh, uh, to be dangerous. I, you know, I, I've, I've at times loved the fourth line, um, you know, even though they got off to the horrible start. Um, but the, um, you know, I, I just think that the defensively you've got to look at is that's uh, the one part of your, your game that you've got to improve on. And whether it's toughness, whether it's, you want to replace Klingberg with a guy that's more puck moving, which you could say Connor Timmons has been able to do that back in the lineup. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think that's the the one area I'm sure that Brett Trilliving is looking at and saying, you know, we we need one, maybe two guys to upgrade the, uh, the back end. Leafs against Columbus tomorrow night, and then Kyle Dubas makes a visit Saturday night. Uh, you think Kyle's looking forward to it? Uh, maybe the scoreboard tribute. Yeah. <laughs> think he's going to get a video, just throw water think? bottles. I know. Hey, Jake, uh, who did it? Uh, didn't Columbus do that for Jonathan Quick? No, did, did they really? Of, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it was all in fun, but they, they uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, he never played a game for them, but <laughs> they did something or, or, you know, what? maybe I saw it on Instagram or something and somebody just made it up, but it's, uh, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, Kyle come back and, you know, obviously, you know, they're not off to the, um, you know, the greatest start uh, for them, but uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. And then we always keep bringing it up that Pittsburgh's actually the last team to shut the Leafs out over two years ago uh, yeah, right. when they were in Toronto. So, yeah, we try to get that stat out as early as we can because it seems uh, as soon as you say it, the Leafs end up scoring. <laughs> <laughs> as the puck drops, you're given that one? Yeah. yeah. And we were doing even the Islander game because the uh, I think Sorokin has most shutouts in the last three or four years of anybody in the league, and uh, Varlamov, the backup, is tied for the second most shutouts. So we got a route right early, and then Matthew scored in the power play. So we're st- we'll we'll be benching that very early on Saturday if the, the streak's still going. JB's writing all these things down, and then we're going to credit our own show. That's right. And so we, yeah. we're just, yeah, we're credit thieves here. We're, we're scouring the internet. <laughs> and according to your insider, yeah, you can use it. <laughs> Ralph, we really appreciate your time, man, as always. Thanks for doing this. Uh, thanks for having me, boys. Thanks, Ralph. All right. What would be on Dubas's, uh, like, video tribute? Just a lot of... Him, uh, it's not working. Oh, there him, we go. him yelling at the fans in yeah. Tampa. Whipping water bottles. Do you remember that? Oh, it was awesome. That was, that was the most I ever liked them. R- running down, you like that you didn't like. Yeah, that. running down the stairs.
uh, chasing the ambulance uh, oh, when Tavares. when Tavares was hurt because that would show him how much he cares. He did it with uh, Mikhaev too. Sat when he got his arm cut or whatever it was. Are cut. we implying this was insincere? No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Jeez, I would never. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Oh, but Sammy boys. told us he won't do any interviews. He won't yeah. conduct into any type of uh, engagement that shows any signs that he ever worked here. I think he's coming in studio for our show. <laughs> what? No yeah, way. We're going to have him in studio. I think it would be. That would be an interesting hour. <laughs> yeah. I he just had a list a really of points to rebut for over the last yeah. few years. I, I to me, okay, Kadri. Maybe Let's just do an hour show on the Kadri trade. Uh, everything's great. <laughs> maybe this is more of a conversation for later in the week, but if they did do a video tribute to Kyle Dubas, that would be one of the more fascinating fan responses to me. I agree. What do you guys think it would I, I, elicit? I think it's Johnny T, 1,000 points. Who? I think it's Boos. I do get a sense that... It's not all cheers. I know yeah, that. that's for sure. I, I get a sense that there's kind of like that that fifty fifty draw out there that they're mm -hmm. they oh. love them or they hate them. Oh, it got to be two. politics here. I was just gonna say right? it's full Democrats Republicans. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's left and, it's You're, left and right. There, there's no centrist. No. You're in or out. The Dubasites. Yeah, and there, although I don't know what I'd classify myself as, I would say that the the quote unquote Dubasites have been. A little quieter since the start of the year with the pick because they were they were pretty horned up over the Carlson trade. I they, they were really doing some laps in the Carlson trade and they were talking about how he's going to re they like the Graves contract. They, they were really in on the. But I was thinking it's got a little quieter. I was thinking like if you're Brad Tree living and you've come here to Toronto, Klingberg's not playing. Reeves has not been impactful. So Domi and who's his other guy? Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi. But don't mean Bertuzzi. Hey, and don't, Gregor. And Gregor. Have and Lagason. And Benoit. Yeah, okay. So, so if don't he, sleep on those boys. You're right. So I wonder, though, if he's the, if he added those guys to the Calgary Flames teams he had, mm. they're still bad. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. They're still bad. Yeah, good so point, I, I don't wonder, or I do wonder if he comes here and watches this team just race car the, you know, the New York Rangers in Madison Square Garden and goes, this is nice. Yeah, nice job. This good job, nice Kyle. <laughs> you know, like, appreciate this collection. Like, I like, Glad I like, you didn't trade any of these guys. I like those four guys, but, you know, that could have used a couple more treats in the cupboards. Yeah. Sure. Could have used a cookie could, in there. Could have left a couple. So, speaking of politics, they should do oh, polls. Oh, okay. No, they, they should do I polls am for on board with this. popularity polls on where... Our show should start doing Yes. This. On where you are, uh, like in, in politics, they go, like, yeah. how confident are you? Call, what, what's call, it called? You know? Ticket holders. What's it called? The, uh, is it the polls? Yeah. yeah or like, but the, the, the pre-election polls. Primary <laughs> polls. Yeah. Or I don't know what they call them. Confidence, Confidence poll. poll yeah. I don't know. But we, you know, like, don't Kipper, tell me. Sammy, could you call a thousand fans before Dude, the next show? I was going to say, get, get that on your Twitter. Proxy. I know you like to Twitter all, put all these tweets out on X. Uh, no, you got the wrong guy now. I think it has to be your yeah. feed, though. No. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're. Kipper, you have like six million you, you followers. You appeal to both sides of the aisle. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. I <laughs> 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 think's dangerous. I only go to it when I absolutely have to. Yeah. Okay. Talk <laughs> fire at all times. You, uh, you need the oven mitts but for that. I bad will boy. say this mm. Brad Tree Living, climbing. Climbing for sure. Climbing. His popularity has climbed in the last three Chopped. weeks. I would say November 1st, he was not very popular. You know, like after three weeks I, of the season where... I think the perception of him has changed since Lagason and Benoit. Bertuzzi and, found it. And, but, those, but those guys have changed it. Because Bertuzzi no. had found it earlier. But the, Gregor, he, he, those three underlying guys. He got it when uh, the hockey gods gave him yeah. a breakfast ball yeah. on, the on the Klingberg contract. Okay. Yeah, if you were still watching Klingy gift one to Panarin last night, guess what? He's three on the tee. He, he's also still standing on the tee, trembling over his second <laughs> one. So yeah, he hasn't taken a cut. He true. hasn't swung it. No. It's not down the fairway. He's lining it up like a putt. <laughs> Just give me another minute with this. Now, one. are you a guy to the uh, routine? <laughs> are you a guy to hit? Like you got the choice, right? You can hit four from the fairway, you or you can hit fairway. three off the tee. Correct. I've never heard of that. Oh, no, it's, it's it's a new golf thing, isn't is that it? Rose deal if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you push one in the That's woods, it. you have the choice of, I think, having a lateral where it went in to hit four. Love that. Done. Or do you every hit time. three? No, from every the time. 
every I think I'm single still time. Out of the woods and hitting three. I think it's my, my choice. <laughs> oh yeah, you're going to have a lock, <laughs> and then you go into the fair. All right, we'll figure it out in the next hour. More real Kipper and Boar. We go national next. Stick around. Let's welcome everybody in to the national edition of the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. We are live on Sportsnet, Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver and Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. This hour of Real Kipper and Bourne brought to you by Bet365. The Kipper Hills, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee for the next hour. In a few minutes, we'll welcome in Andy Strickland, host of 590 The Fan in St. Louis, co-host of Cam and Strick Podcast. It's always fun listening to those two guys talk hockey. And, of mm. course, we'll discuss the biggest story of at least yesterday is the firing of Craig Berube, head yeah. coach of the St. Louis Blues. Yeah. yeah, I mean, one of those guys that you just imagined was going to be there forever. Like, I never thought about the Blues in their coaching position because their coach is Craig Berube. What do you mean? Like, you're never going to fire that guy. However... They've been underperforming long enough, and at some point, you got to do something. Uh, okay, underperforming. I think I see what thirteen. Uh, what's their record? Thirteen. They're probably twelve 14 and thirteen and one. Is that right? Okay, yeah. Okay, a uh, game under five hundred. That's a fireable offense when you won the Stanley Cup a short while ago. They don't have no one. Robert Thomas and Kairou and Saad and Buchnevich and Braden Shen. Like they got players. Proko Pro. Pareko? Pareko. There it is. Krug and Falk. Like, they they have enough players to win some hockey so, games. So, uh, like Nashville, of course, uh, firing earlier this year as well. Like, are these teams ex- expecting to make the playoffs or Mid. be a contender? I actually think the fact that the West is so bad at the bottom, the wild card That level, everybody wants to sneak in. Well, everyone's going... You know, if maybe if we make the change, we can get that extra 10% from the dead cat bounce, and we can be the team who gets in. Get my owner the seven home gates or the, you know, six home gates, whatever it may be. Bruby guided the Blues to the Stanley Cup when they were dead in the water by that that year, that Christmas year, I think, or even January. Yeah. One of the worst teams in the league. I mean, this is this is a, a guy that, made history and we may never see that type of history ever again right so you, you know you sound like you're yeah, a little upset like about it. this i just i'm i'm not sure that it's I, I, nothing in life is fair but yeah. i just don't know whether or not this warranted a firing i think that there are a, a there's a type of coach and I'm not calling putting him in Tortorella's camp, but like he's a hard guy with high expectations, right? They're called hard asses, JB. Yeah, and you know what they are? They're a part of this honest era of hockey players who demands something of their players every day False. because that's what they gave. And I think at some point it does wear on guys. But hey, look at this. Like Rick Tockett is in that camp to me, and look at the success he's having in Vancouver. Rod Brindamore, another guy who played the game hard, honest demands of his guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if it's wearing thin there, but he's had a lot of success. I, I don't know that I would put Torts in that camp necessarily, but no, he's one of a few guys who that's the reputation they have, right? And so he will be valuable to another team is my point. The type of guy he is will earn him another NHL job before the season's over. Leafs are playing great. Keith's doing a good job. But God, can you imagine Barube, the coach of the Leafs? You're firing... No, Keith, I'm not. Then why I, are you bringing I, it I, up? Just said, I literally just said he's doing a great job. <laughs> but can you imagine him as the coach of these guys, what the difference was, would be? Because it's just such a different style of thing. Yes, he would like, lock some when, of their best players we, out of the dressing room. Someday. When we, I booked Craig Berube in our first season of the show. And I, the PR guy's like, yeah, sure, here's his number. Can try him. He just like, I gave, he gave me his number. I gave him a call. He's like, hey, yeah, sure, I'll come on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not, like, not, not a lot of red tape no, with this guy. No, it's, it calls yeah. it like he sees it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know much about uh, Drew Bannister, who takes over. Uh, he was coaching Springfield in the American Hockey League. You haven't been following the system structure of the American uh, Hockey League team he coaches? I don't know. I mean, you know, my, my first thought is they just want to get through the the season. Don't want to. Not having to pay the big bucks. Don't have. I, but if, if there was somebody out there, would they even pay the big bucks? I don't know. But. There are. Coach Q, come back. Yeah. Uh, you need you need uh, 
a blessing <laughs> for Mike, that to Mike, happen Mike, Mike at the National available. Hockey League office. Any other good ideas, Born? <laughs> Any other? <laughs> Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. It's not like there's an obvious replacement there for him. All right, we uh, we expect to talk to Andy Strickland about that and uh, and where the Blues go and their expectations. So we'll uh, we'll wait more momentarily for him. Sammy, any word on? Uh... He, he, I told him five after, so he's coming soon. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else you want to discuss before we get to, to Andy? Yeah, we can talk about the you know who they're fighting against there. The Calgary Flames last night uh, playing Vegas. Another you know, tough loss for this Flames team. And, you know, they played two really good teams. Yeah, they did. Really hard in Colorado and Vegas and leave those games with one point. Uh, disappointing, I would say, for the Flames and where their season's at. Uh, moral kind of victories that you can go toe-to-toe and, and, and look good against Colorado at times and then the Stanley Cup champions. There has to be something in there, at least that – that that lineup can say, even without Tanov, that we're, we're not that far off, boys. No, they're a few points out of the wild card spot. Like, like two or two, well, actually just two points, but with games played, then they're helped out a bit. But yeah, so they're close. And you're right. With that moral victory, you feel like maybe they're a team that can climb up there. They're actually uh, one point behind the Blues who fired their coach. So goes to show how or owners feel about teams at that part of the standings. And I was watching the Battle of the Connors last night. And it lived up to exactly what you guys are talking about. Yeah. It's just, I mean, Connor Bedard, his first goal, the only goal of the game Ba-ding! was unbelievable. Yeah. Like the way he brings the puck into the middle of the ice where his body doesn't move, gets it far corner, bar down, beautiful. But the Blackhawks are just way too bad yeah. for that game to matter. I should they have suck. asked you to get the Stu Skinner clip about this, about the goal. He was like, yeah, you know, he pulls it in quick and he gets it off quick and he placed it perfectly. But there's... Probably something I can do there. He still didn't even know what he could have done to have theorized. He's like, yeah, I probably I could have know. done like something. To, to to change the angle of of where he set up. And I don't Over know. Dark. Yeah. For me, it's but also. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything humanly possible that you could you could change your your vision of where your your puck line is mm-hmm. that quickly. That's how. But he also knows that D-man is about to put pressure on him, and he lets him get close enough so he can pull it back and shoot it through the guy's triangle. And that D-man, by the way, Ekholm. Yeah, like a guy who's been it, in the league a few minutes. It wasn't like Cody CC or one of like right. just It's Ekholm, yeah. their top guy. It's a nasty goal. Really nice. Okay, let's welcome in Andy Strickland, host of 590 The Fan in St. Louis, co-host of Cam and Strick Podcast. Hey, uh, there he you is. good? You ready? <laughs> where do Always we find you, you? Kipper. where do we find you andy kipper i'm trying to do some christmas shopping man i got like two hours my son's got hockey tonight they, they fire the coach it's an off day today you know i mean so but you'll want to tune in tomorrow night valley sports midwest for the game it'll be interesting uh drew bannister makes his uh nhl coaching debut a lot of people asking who that is so who bannister um uh, drew bannister yeah he's been coaching down in the american league so he's the only guy in the organization that has head coaching experience, you know. So they were limited in terms of the options. But I, I would imagine uh, Doug Armstrong, he'll be working the phones and they'll be trying to find a permanent replacement relatively soon. Hey, I, I imagine your your first one on your list, your shopping list, is something for Craig Berube because, uh, I don't know, man, he could pack up and move it any second now. How surprised were you? Uh, this is a coach that, like, we're talking about some serious history uh, just a few years ago, of uh, taking a team out of nothing and turning them into Stanley Cup champions, I, I imagine it was a very difficult emotional decision for Doug Armstrong. Yeah, I think it's difficult. Uh, I got to be honest with you, Kipper. Like I, I've, I've been through a number of coaches here in St. Louis, um, you know, and starting with Joel Quimbo. This, this has the feeling that's closely, you know, closeless, a close resembles Joel Quimbo you know, in terms of when he got fired, you know, in terms of his popularity with the fan base, uh, the accomplishments he had behind the bench and, you know, with the team on the ice and just, uh, you know, how good of a coach he was. Um, I remember a lot of heat, you know, was put on the Blues organization, Larry Plow at the time for for firing, uh, you know, Q because the team, you know, was above 500 and, and, you know, they had a lot of success prior to him, you know, being ousted. This has a much more similar feel, you know, way different than when Andy Murray came on board or Davis Payne, 
or, uh, you know, Mike Yo or Ken Hitchcock, all these guys that have, you know, come through here. Um, so, listen, the fan base is a little upset today. I, I think they look at, you know, the, the Blues organization, um, you know, how much it's changed, you know, since they won the Cup back in 2019, the popular players who have moved on who are no longer here. You know, David Perron was in the house last night. He didn't play, obviously, as you guys know, because of his suspension. But, you know, he had a couple of former Blues in the lineup who scored goals. Robbie Fabry had a goal. Uh, Jake Wallman had a goal. Billy Huso's in net. But you don't have Vince Dunn, who's here, who obviously has gone on to Seattle from the expansion draft. He's had a lot of success there. Ryan O'Reilly was the captain here. And, um, you know, he, he's another one. Ivan Barbashev, you know, 27 years of age, signs a five-year deal to stay in, in Vegas. Uh, Tarasenko is no longer here. I mean, it's got a lot of players. Jaden Schwartz is another one. I mean, who were an integral part of the, of the of the core, you know, that brought this team a Stanley Cup. But I know you can't keep the band together forever, as Doug Armstrong said today. But uh, the play, the, the the pieces that they've used to replace those guys, just really haven't panned out, and it's a a, a big part of the reason as to why we're in the situation that we're in today. So how much of this then is the team really underachieving the roster compared to just looking at maybe the job Doug Armstrong has done with some of those players and going, boy, we're losing and I, I got to do something here. You know, listen, I think it's a great question. And I, and I think the fan base and a lot of the media, to be honest with you, they're pointing the finger at Doug Armstrong right now. Yeah. But I, I'll tell you what, we're going to find out what that answer is in terms of how the team responds and how they play the rest of this season. You know, is this a coaching issue or is this a roster issue? You know, I look at this team and I don't think anybody expected this team to compete for a Stanley Cup this year. You know, you had a lot of pieces, um, you know, obviously that, you know, the Blues got, whether it's off of waivers or off the scrap heap from other organizations who had term left in their contract, hoping that they would maybe catch lightning in a bottle. Guys like, you know, Kasperi Kapanen. Um, you know, uh, Jocko Barana, you know, who's, you know, going down to the American League today, he cleared waivers, you know, Sammy Blay, you know, the three of those players last year when they were brought on board around the trade deadline, I think they combined for close to 30 goals. Nobody expected them to produce at that level this season. But, you know, you just kind of have a bunch of different personalities, a bunch of different players, and you just don't see that line to line and shift to shift chemistry or cohesion that we're used to seeing with the St. Louis Blues team, you know? So I'm, I'm not going to completely let Craig Berube off the hook here either. I mean, defensively, they've been poor. Their special teams have been historically bad over the course of the last two seasons. I mean, their power play is absolutely atrocious. They had an opportunity again last night to have that make a difference in the game, and they didn't, and they haven't been able to figure that out. So, you know, uh, listen, I'm not of the belief, and Kipper, you can comment on this too. I mean, you can talk about skill and all you want. I, I don't know if skill is required to always keep the puck out of the net. You know, sometimes you just got to have a little bit of commitment, a little bit of compete. We're used to seeing that from a, uh, a St. Louis Blues team. And now when you see them not competing at the level that's been the standard here for a long time, I think that's hard to accept for the, the fan base, to be honest with you. But you go back to this past weekend, right? Back-to-back -back games against Columbus and Chicago, you lose both those games. I think at that time you had a, a feeling that we could be getting to the point where we're at right now. Then you lose last night to Detroit. They're without Larkin. They're without Perron. You lose that game. They lost to San Jose on the road earlier this year. They lost to Minnesota on the road when Minnesota was in the midst of a seven-game losing streak. We're not even 30 games into the season. They've got some bad losses on their record right now. Andy, so what is the the the, the big picture here that this is a coaching change uh, made because we believe we are a playoff team and uh, we should be there or was it was there ever a thought that this is a transition year all out with the uh, the Tarosenkos of the world and uh, Petrangelos and we got to start developing young kids again like what what is the main goal here moving forward development or getting to the playoffs um, well, they're spending to the cap. You know, I know most teams do spend to the cap nowadays anyway, but when you're spending to the cap, I think the idea and the, the mindset has to be to make the playoffs. I mean, you can't tell the Blues chairman, Tom Stillman, that, hey, we're going to spend to the cap, but we're going to miss the playoffs. I think the mindset is always to make the playoffs. I think they looked at the division and they said, okay, 
you've got your uh, two alpha males in Colorado and Dallas, and then the third place position is going to be up for grabs, you know, and now obviously the wild card as well. And, uh, and they felt like they could compete with the Winnipeg's and the Nashville's and the Arizona's, you know, to, to slide in behind Colorado and Dallas. But all it takes is one, you know, losing streak. You know, they lost four in a row now. You start to lose more than that. I mean, you're you're out of it. You're donezo for the season. And it's tough to recover from that. Um, but I think it's a great question. I think they came into the season thinking they could make the playoffs. I asked Doug Armstrong that today. Does he think this is a playoff team? I think he, he believes that they're good enough to make the playoffs. I don't think he goes beyond that, thinking that they're a contender. But once you get in, anything – can happen, but you know, you look at their roster side by side to the teams that they're losing to right now. I just think it's unacceptable. And uh, listen, I had a chance to talk to Craig Bruby. I, I, th- I think that he probably would admit that his message wasn't getting through to the team mm-hmm. and that it got stale. And he's a very intense coach. Um, you know, he wants his team to play a certain way. And I think he looks at the roster right now and says, this is not what you would typically see from a St. Louis Blues team. And it's probably not a good fit for his coaching style. I think he would admit that. So with some of the pieces that you have in the lineup right now, it's uh, these aren't really Craig Berube type players where you can make the case they certainly were when they were having a lot of success and obviously won the Stanley Cup. A couple of teams in the West that'll be fighting for the wild card, card spot are Canadian teams, both in Alberta. The Oilers have been climbing up and the Flames have been, I don't know what you want to say they're doing. They're trying their darndest, just like the St. Louis Blues. Uh, do you have any thoughts on either of those two teams that they'll be competing with for those final spots? Well, it looks like Edmonton is is who we thought that they would be right. coming into the season, yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean... That shouldn't be a surprise. It's interesting because they fell so far down at the beginning of the season that that kind of opened up the idea that maybe one of these teams out of the Central could steal one of those wild card right. spots, you know? And uh, and now they're back to, you know, playing at the level that they should. You know, sometimes a coaching change can do that, guys. Listen, I've seen it, man. I mean, and you guys obviously have too. But, you know, I saw Andy Murray take over a team that almost made the playoffs. They were completely out of it when he took over. Then they made the playoffs the, the next year, I believe. Davis Payne, no one even knew who the hell he was. And he gets a contract extension, you know, as the head coach here. I'd never been a head coach in the NHL. Great guy, by the way. Sorry, Painter. He's now an assistant coach in Ottawa. He was my thing. coach in the ECHL. Yeah. He was a great coach. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The, ha- the house of pain. Yeah. But, and then, you know, Ken Hitchcock wins the Jack Adams when he took over. Uh, Craig Ruby wins the Stanley Cup the year that he took over. So, you know, you look at what Edmonton's doing right now. They're winning virtually every night, what John Hines is doing in Minnesota. You know, sometimes we've seen this before. You make that coaching change, a new voice that gets people's attention. You know, Drew Bannister knows a number of players inside this dressing room having coached them in the American League, both in San Antonio and most recently in Springfield. So he's auditioning for his job. I would not call him a serious candidate as it sits right now, but he can certainly coach his way into becoming one. It's interesting because when Chief took over, I don't think the idea for Doug Armstrong was to hire Craig Ruby as the next head coach. In fact, I think they were interviewing potential coaching candidates even after the playoffs had started, thinking about who was going to be the head coach beyond the 18-19 season. I, Craig Ruby coached his way into being that guy, and now he's highly regarded throughout the league, and he's going to land on his feet very, very quickly. So this is an organization, speaking of coaches, man, like Hall of Fame, you just mentioned them all. You didn't even throw in Keenan Meyer. Like these were big, bigger than life type of guys behind a bench. Are Blue fans going to be okay with this this guy coming in or you got to go out there and find a big name to someone that's they've been accustomed to all these years? You know, listen, they're not happy right now. Um, Kipper, they're really not. They're upset, you know, and um, they love Chief. You know, he's a guy that you see out at a local restaurant, at a local bar, much like Quenville. And when he sees you, you know, he doesn't hide. He's not one of these guys who just hides. You know, he's he's a man of the people and very approachable, great guy. You know, he played over a thousand games in the league. Like he just kind of gets it and he has that relatability. But 
listen, I get it from Doug Armstrong's standpoint as well. You know, sometimes the message gets stale. And um, you look at how they're losing, who they're losing to. This was not going to correct itself. Special teams, team defense. I mean, that's really the name of the game, to be honest with you. If you can't keep the puck out of your own net and you can't be consistent from a special team standpoint, it's really difficult to win hockey games. Craig, uh, listen, uh, Jordan Bennington's been great this season. Um, and if he didn't perform the way that he had, you know, the first month of the season, this is probably a lottery team, to be honest with you. So he covered up a lot of those mistakes. They've been probably better defensively this season than they were last year. But the, the negative trends that we're seeing from the St. Louis Blues right now, these are not new. These have been ongoing for at least the last two years. One more for me, Andy, and I promise to let you go here so you can yeah, wrap good. up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last few years, we've seen kind of the, the keys being passed over to Robert Thomas and, and Jordan Cairo, eight-year deals, big money. Uh, they are the future. Is that still the case here, the building around these guys? Well, I think so. Thomas has been great this year, honestly. I mean, he's, he's matching up against the other team's number one center every single night. He's putting up points. You know, he and Pavel Buchnevich have chemistry together. You know, Cairo, obviously, for whatever reason, he's not scoring. You know, this guy had 37 goals last season. He was like, you know, minus 100. I uh, didn't even have a good year last year and scored 37. He can be an electrifying player, but he, it's, it's not happening this year. So, you know, I talked to him today. He, he's got a good rapport, actually, with the guy who's coming in at Drew Bannister. He played for him down in the American League. I'll be interested to see. He's the one player that I'm kind of curious to see how he reacts and how his game translates now with having a new, you know, guy behind the bench. Does this really get a guy like uh, – you know, Jordan Kyrou going because they got to get him going. But yeah, there's no doubt they're they're committed to these guys. They're making a lot of money. But, you know, I, I look at some of these teams around the league like Boston and some of these, you know, uh, offensive teams who can get up and down the ice. They've got a ton of skill in their lineup. I mean, you put Jordan Kyrou in one of these lineups, man. I mean, he would be he would be great. Honestly, he there's there's a lot to be left to be desired in terms of his two way game, although he's had more commitment this year to playing in the defensive end, not to get all analytic on you, but there was a time when he was like leading the, the all blues forwards and block passes in the defensive end. And he was making a more of a commitment to play in his own end and not just be a guy that wants to run and gun it and cheat a little bit, but you need this guy to perform. And when you don't produce on the power play, it's kind of tough for your top offensive players to have, you know, impactful stats or impressive stats. Hey, the three of us aren't hard to shop for. Just gift cards work yeah, too, right? Yeah, pretty simple, man. Don't overdo it. What do you want? What do you want? Help me. <laughs> to be able to make a four-foot putt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A new putter or new hands. Andy, appreciate it, hey. man. Thanks for doing this. You guys are the best. Anytime. And good to see you guys, too. So I hope this doesn't look too goofy. Looks nah, great. You're great, yeah, man. Like Shopping, the look of shopping always works for us. Andy Strickland. Thanks, Strick. From the Cam and Strick podcast. Uh, yeah. I think I think the St. Louis Blue fans have been spoiled with yeah. some really, Big really, yeah. Two questions. I, sorry. I have a question for you before okay. you get in. Yeah. This is completely off the rails, but okay. I have to ask anyway. I was looking at um, Davis Payne. Okay, yeah. Because he was talking about him. Yeah. And he coached. This is a ECHL question. Yeah. What is the PD Pride? No idea. Okay. That's a team. Is that that a team? team. <laughs> the what PD you, Pride. What year is that? From 01 to 03, he was the head coach, or an assistant coach, oh, head coach with them. And then he was the Alaska Aces coach, your, your head coach. I got nothing on the Pride. No, never played against the Pride? No, no idea. <laughs> okay, Can't right. even think of a state right. or a city okay. that would be called that. What's the coach's name again? Davis Payne was the coach. Oh, no. Oh, the, the Bannister. Bannister. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that like... Uh, uh, Incredible Hulk guy. Yes, yes, that's right. Isn't their character. Yes, the Incredible Hulk. We actually are going to get killed for not knowing Bruce Banner. Is that what you're like? Bruce oh, Banner yeah, yeah, or yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Bruce Bannister? No, it's definitely <laughs> not Bannister. Oh, it's not Bannister. It's Bruce, okay, it's I'm in the ballpark. Yeah, you're close. I mean, I mean, uh, by the way, I made like a silly, you know, who Bannister joke. He played years in the NHL, six years or something. Like he's, you know, I don't remember. I do. I just don't remember. You know. How old is he? 
Uh, 49. 49. Much Two questions. I was almost, looking, almost, yeah, he's younger than me. I was looking at Berube's uh, hockey DB, the oh, yeah. prospects page, actually. Did you, you must have played with him. He was in Hershey and Philly. We're teammates. You were, okay. Yeah. In, in Philly, sorry, in Hershey? In Hershey. So his Hershey stats are why I wanted to ask you this. 63 games, 7 goals, 17 assists, 325 pims. God, he is scary. You guys oh must have had some fun together. Scary. So then my eye goes to the pim category. He had like 15 years of like 200 pims. So all-time pims guys, I went to the list. Seventh all-time in NHL pims with 3,149. Badass. Can you name yeah. the six men ahead of Craig Berube in all-time pims? Tiger Williams. Number one. Ty Domi. Number three. Bob Probert. Number five. Rob Bray. Number six. There's two to go. Uh, Marty McSorley. Yeah, you got it. Wow, boys. Uh, and, my so, numbers are all off. You so have five we, and we, six. There's one more. We, have, we didn't Probert. get number four yet? Yeah, you don't have the number two guy yet. Number Probert. two guy. Bro, I said Probert. Probert you said, said, okay. Yeah. Uh, two. This oh, is my incredible. Two guy. As well. it's, this is I'll embarrassing. Give you the guy who's eighth and the guy who's second Hunter. Are, are related. There it is. Yeah. The... the, the Dale, Dale Hunter. Dale, yeah. Dale Hunter. Dale, you don't really kind of think of him as a, the, the fighter heavy, guy. Yeah. Same way. Just a guy that. I can't believe that was really impressive trivia. That you guys just rattled off five of the six like but that. I, my favorite thing ever was just to watch fights. Like I, I grew <laughs> up. You know, I, like, I like fights. Anyways. Yeah. For rounding out the top 10 is Tim Hunter, Chris Nyland with some knuckles, and Rick Tockett at 10. That's a lot of time in the penalty box. So there was this one time, I don't know what I did, goofy. Uh, you pass seven on the scale. No, I uh, I did something and I got Craig Berube so mad that he jumped off the bench to come and get me to chase you. Yeah, your old teammate. Yes, but like it, at that point, it didn't. You'd be best friends if you. Yeah. If you, I know his role, he knows mine. If you fight, you It'd fight. Been like a bear chasing me, I'd been throwing his gloves. I he see him coming after me, and then I'm like, oh boys, please, you know, I need the big. <laughs> I need the the wolf pack mentality right now. Yeah. And then sure enough, Bill McCurry is a referee and he grabs him. He goes, you just came off the bench. You're suspended for 10 games. <laughs> and I'm like, Bill, you just saved my life. Did Thank he get you. Suspended? Because the moment Bill told him that he came off the bench for a suspension, he stopped focusing on me. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, wow. what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? You came off the bench. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I'm like, Okay, you guys go work it out amongst yourselves. Okay, I'm just going to go back to my bench. That's more like being chased by a bear throwing a steak out of your pocket. Yeah, yes. whatever. <laughs> just took him um, off your scent exactly. a little bit. That's great. God, Dale Hunter's hockey DB is so impressive. He got 14, some just 1,400 well. games, over 1,000 points, 3,500 penalty minutes. That's busy. He that's was as at, good he was as it involved gets. in the games when he was out yeah. there. I'm, I'm, up I'm there, for eh? one, for, like, you got to start considering these guys in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. But they, they won't, were, because why? They had too many penalty no, minutes? you know what? They were an impactful part of a, of a period of hockey. Huge you know, impactful. Like they, he played 186 playoff they games. They changed series. Would, would you say oh, that that's for sure. maybe one of the best cases might be Marty McSorley? Because he was a good player, too, for a while, right? No? I... It, I'm going to go through to, to, these to me, guys. To me, like, one of the best transitions from complete tough guy, yeah. quote-unquote goon, to a guy that helped uh, helped himself by developing a position on the L.A. Kings to, to police and still play 20 minutes a night. Yeah. It's incredible. You know, it is. I would say of the guys who are, like, kind of top 20, talk it. Um, Pat Verbeek is 11th in PIMS, but he's not really what you're talking about f for that kind of impactful guy. Chelios and Stevens, I assume, are in. Pat, who you'd put in the Hall of Fame, Pat man. wasn't buried in Hartford all those years, he could have he could have had uh, an easier time to be considered for the Hall of Fame, that's for sure. Bob Probert, you know, like, impactful guy. I don't know. They'll never, they'll never, they'll never do that. Dale for... Hunter, to me, though, like, that, I know, I hate to praise him because just his, nice, his junior hockey team has haunted talking. my life. But like, we're he, his numbers are incredible. Oh, Tockett's talk a 3,000 PIM guy. How's Tockett not in the Hall of Fame? I mean, he has the my favorite stat ever. The all-time leader in Gordie Howe hat-tricks is the most badass stat you can have. You cannot be more involved in hockey no, games that is, than that. That's as good Sorry, as it gets. Yeah, like, is there a stat column? I will fill it. Whatever you need me to do. Yeah. Are you going to do uh, game time or are we going to come back to it? No, we can do it right now. All right. How's that sound? Let it rip.
It's game time, presented by Bet365. Visit the app for the latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Going back to my underdog plays. I know people probably don't love it. I, I think I, I don't think yesterday was great. No, I did. Got the got the uh, got the Red Wings as an underdog yep. in St. Louis, yep. and they won six four. Uh, my Flyers lost an OT to the Nashville Predators. Oh, and Kipper Pittsburgh did beat Arizona. They did. Yeah. I wanted to mention. Did you see Andy Frost do the play by do the the intros for the Philadelphia Flyers yesterday? I did not. Oh, I did I not send that to the group. No, I oh, don't know. Oh my, because obviously his son Morgan yes. plays for the Flyers, and the sound of and, all those years on and his, 107 and the and uh, at the and the Toronto Maple Leafs. His voice does something to me like yeah. it brings out a feeling in me that i haven't felt and like it's just like your youth as a hockey fan like it's yeah, like, like my wife when she like hears barry mango. white yeah being, you know, maybe, well, <laughs> I'm know, maybe a bad example <laughs> maybe a bad example I'm trying to think, uh, anyways um that was an awesome it was an awesome clip if you haven't seen it but tortorella brings him in and he does like the whole full-on announcing of it but he didn't start morgan he didn't know which is insane to nah. me you're going to bring in Andy to he call the lineup. Hey, uh, Andy's a hockey guy. He gets it. He thinks his son's not good enough. Didn't deserve it. Good for him. Tough love. But, but, but Spezza in the press box. And the guys in the room were so fired up. Yeah. They were just loving it. So I, I wanted to bring that up if you haven't seen that. Um, for tonight, uh, the Bruins visiting New Jersey. Bruins are an underdog in that game, plus 105. Uh, you know, that's... Listen, if, if they're... Goaltending goes just a tad south on oh, yeah. them. The Bruins? I'm, I'm fully yeah. off the Bruins wagon. And I don't think they're very there's, good. Yeah, they're the, right back in the mix. I, the, and, the Devils can't get a save. The Devils' goaltending is really, really bad. The, the, if the Devils and the Bruins flipped goaltending, oh, the yeah. Devils would be where the Bruins are better. Yeah. Or the Devils! <laughs> and vice versa. The Devils! So I like the Bruins tonight in New Jersey as an underdog. And the other one I was looking at, second half of back-to-back for... Uh, Kipper's beloved Pittsburgh Penguins playing in Montreal. They're a huge favorite. I don't think they should be favored huge against anybody. Give me the Habs as a plus 125. Wednesday night. betting against Doobie. Wednesday yeah. night game of the week here for you oh, yeah, uh, on Rogers. I own Le Television. I will be talking about how Cole Caulfield cannot shoot the hockey puck into the hockey net tonight. If you'd like to stick around and listen to that. Do you care to divulge any of those or are you going to save it sure. for Sure. Last year he was 12 for 27 on one-timers. This year he's 0 for 15. And he's getting the pucks in the same spot. 12 for 27 is really good. Really insanely really high. Really good. Yeah. He's hitting the net. He's not hitting the net. You or... know, he's kind of getting the same shots at the same rates from the same places. I'm not, you know, it, it's just not going in. Okay. Is it a given he's going to be a really good, consistent 40-goal no. scorer? I, I bought, thought I... so. Yeah. I'm going to, I can't say it's a given. I can't say it's a given. No. Okay. I balked at that contract and it was signed. And it's, to me, it's a scary one. Okay. That was Game Time presented by Bet365. Visit the app for the latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary. At Bet365, must be 19 plus, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Okay, still plenty to go here on the Real Kipper and Born Show. News and notes, including Brady Kachuk. Oh, my God. A penalty <laughs> shot that didn't go exactly his way, but it's his reaction <laughs> that we'll discuss after you the like break. like a squirrely player. He's Captain Squirrely. Squirrely. Also, some talk about the Washington Capitals moving. Yeah. Do you know and the, nobody do you know mentioned this to me uh, when I was there All earlier the way, this year. four miles away. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Prawn appealing his suspension. Plenty <laughs> to talk about when we return on Real Kipper and Born. We're back. Ottawa Senators seem to be in this kind of win one, lose one, win one. That ain't going to dig you Frustrating out of Frustrating team. Eh, it's not digging you out of the... Eastern Conference, and they played last night the Carolina Hurricanes and the team that uh, a, a few teams have taken advantage of mm -hmm. while they kind of get their season on track. Yeah. But late in the game, 4-1, is the game over? It's not over. It's still yeah, about there. four and a half minutes to go left in the game. Brady Kachuk gets a penalty shot. Uh, Kochek. Kochetkov is the goaltender for Carolina. Also squirrely. Did he drop his stick? Did he throw his stick? Do you think it, first of all, it warranted a penalty shot? Yes. I'm pro. If you're unsure, call the shot. Yeah. Hold on to your okay. stick. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I'm, I'm with you there. You, you, you don't drop your stick. Yeah. But they, I mean, they really Classic. have changed the goalposts on penalty shots. 
Like a guy, a guy, a guy would have a step from the blue line in the first week of the season, and they'd call. So it. true. And then the hey. Leafs have had like two on O's where Nyes gets hauled down. They're like, no, nothing. They've changed the standard. Anyways, continue. Yes. Kochetkov stops him. Mm-hmm. It was the reaction of Brady Kachuk that caught your eye. Well, the Kochetkov stopped him thing is, I think, frustrating if you're a Senators fan because he makes a leaping aggressive poke a check. Very Johnny Bauer like yes. poke check. And the poke doesn't come within a foot and a half of the puck, but it goes directly into Chuck's skate, who goes down hard and hits the boards pretty hard and gets up angry. You had a take and you wouldn't tell us about it before. Well, you like it or no? think it was, what are your thoughts? Oh, I absolutely loved it from uh, Kochekov. Yeah. You're trying to stop the penalty shot. I think it's a big, like, I love Brady Kachuk and I love how aggressive he is. It was a big baby look for me. Really? Yeah. I thought it was a bad look for him to go out to the goal. He, and the, he got his pad up and he got the shot off, yeah. but the stick affected him. He made the save with his, yeah, I, it was, what is Brady doing? I'm, I'm with Sammy. Like the guy played you hard and yeah. that's had, it. The coming, play's dead. He was coming in right? too slow. Yeah. He had his head down. He, he wasn't paying attention. Early enough, you just stop and go around. Yes. I will say, I saw some goalies tweeting that you don't necessarily make the poke check at the puck. The guy's going to be stick handling. You're, you're poking towards where you expect the puck to be. Yes. And if, and if Kachuk's going to go around him, you would do it. You would lead him a little bit, and you got your stick out there. Martin Jones did so, it to Zabinajad last night when he tried to cut out in front. He yeah. I've, swiped it away. I've had a conversation a, a few times with some NHL head office people over the years, and I'm like, what happens if a goalie just comes out and plays the man? <laughs> just, just, wow. Yeah. Dex him. Asked Tim Thomas just about that. Penalty. Absolutely dex him. Tim Thomas smoked one of the Sedins. And, uh, the, the answer is nothing. Nothing would happen. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I love it, yeah. And we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we ever come to it. Probably won't. Yeah. I'd love to see it. But, you know, I think the Chuck reaction is a product of a growing sense of frustration. You know, that they need that one or that game is slipping away. That, that game is gone at that point. But that puck not going in the net. And I think Chuck's just... He's sick of it. He's competitive. He doesn't want to be on a team that's eighth in the it's Atlantic fine. all he had, year. A, he had a fiery look in his eye. I've got no problem with the reaction of Brady Kachuk there either. It's fine. Kachuk was a little off so his nut, he's too. He's not which happy. Is great. So they, they should let him go. Bad luck. Sorry. No, it's not a horrible it look, is. Sammy. No, it's not. It's he's, a competitive look. No, you're going after the goalie. The ref has to get in between you and the goalie, and none of your teammates are on the ice to defend your goalie. It's I, a bad I, look. It's a bad look. I'm no sorry. Good. Yeah. No good. For uh, for Brady, yeah, th- he can go after the goalie. What other situation? If, if he any- really wanted to get him, he could have got yeah, him. Yeah, but what but other, he didn't. But what other situation you ever have in a hockey game where you get to go mouth to mouth with the goalie and give him a piece of your mind because he made a save on you? Everybody else is on the bench; they can't defend their goalie. Like it's just a bad look for Brady. You got stopped. Like I love Brady Kachuk. Now you're you're making this way too. No, big. I think it was bad. I think it's a bad look. I really do. Sour grapes, man. You got stopped on a. Breakaway. He stopped you. Too this, bad. This is the start of an anti Kachuk stance. We haven't had her on no, the show. Very no. pro Kachuk show. Love Kachuk. Yeah. Truly one of my favorite players in the league. Yeah. Uh, Hated last night. Hated it. No. Yeah. Fine with it. And they're, I mean, they're I'm last pretty, place. Fine. They're yeah. last place. Don't, I'm pretty, I'm don't pretty need you to be polite. Don't, we got enough of those guys in the league. Yeah. Okay. Just, I mean, Sour grapes. Good. Yeah. Entertaining. All right. right. All right. Good stance for the team. Uh, Before you go to Otani. Okay. Oh, we're going to Otani? No, no. We're no. Going to the oh, we we thought we wouldn't go to Otani. We're, uh, we've got, like, Otani, like... <laughs> yeah, we could do an Otani like, yeah. show. Oh, okay. No, we're going to save Otani. Okay. Go All-star hockey. All-star game. All-star game. Yes. The, um, the league announced yeah. a new skills format. Yes, which And I love. you love. Okay, so tell us about it. So the skills format is 12 NHL players will be in the All-star game skills contest, and there will be six skills events. Each player will get to pick four that they want to participate in, and mm. they will earn points based on how they rank in those four events. Okay. The players who have the most points uh, that are remaining, I think it's six or eight of the players out of the 12, whoever have the most points, will go on to two more events, one of them being a shootout and one of them being an obstacle course. And they're playing for a million dollars. The winning player will get a million dollars. They will care about that. It's the NHL. It's not the NBA play-in tournament. So we know Connor will be one of them for sure, but how do they go about picking 11 other guys? Good question. Maybe they just hand-pick them. Who we think is the most entertaining? It's our show. Uh, 
excuse me. I, it's I, a million bucks in line? I, I get to yeah, be yeah. In. Why is he more entertaining than me? I want a million buck chance. I don't know. The, what's the, uh, what's it called? In the flip a coin? Tour, the player impact? The the, yeah, they have like a, I don't know, whoever's getting tweeted about the most. We're putting the people in who people care about the most. If you want to be in the All-Star Skills next year, Kip, then tweet something interesting. <laughs> Give us a good interview. <laughs> Dress nice. We need to be entertained. So, okay, yeah. so you got Willie in there then. Willie's in. Willie Bedard. Styles. Bedard's, cannot, in there. Bedard's in. McDavid's in. Sid's in. All the guys that are selling your tickets. In Toronto Kucherov? for a million bucks. Kucherov? He's a fringer. He's fringy. I mean, he's leading the league in points, isn't he? Hughes is in. Oh, Hughes well, is in for My sure. first thought is I like it. It's I'm, I'm going to watch game. it because well, there's stakes. A million bucks is auto Listen, stakes. The, I'm not yeah, going through the motions the, on my lap. When no. I hear this, the first thing I think of is, hey, they got hockey people to go back and do it. That's, doesn't it feel like that? No, no. It feels it like... Did, no, that's exactly what happened. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. They took it out of, like, non-hockey people with... with the social dunk, media people? With dunk contests in Florida. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm shocked <laughs> they're still in business after that. The league. Yeah, the, the league. league the the, the league the should have folded after the dunk competition <laughs> in Florida last year. Okay. Okay? That Just was... the mere fact that we're all here with jobs in itself is a miracle okay. at Christmas. No, but the fact that we didn't die of boredom watching people try to pass pucks into the, the little net... Uh, it, it is impressive that we're finally Can here. I just say that I take a lot of pride as a Toronto person yeah. that they're like, okay. This we're going to Toronto. This we can't thing's do going the to Toronto. <laughs> we got to do this right. We got to do hockey. I really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like it's in the hockey. Yeah. Mecca. You know, Sorry, people. Are like, like, it's Con Connor's Canada. all over That's it, right? the thing. They, they, they kind of built it around Connor. Well, did, I think they That's had, smart. They had uh, hockey guys. A say. Yes, I think not they hard had to a figure say. it out. Yeah, like Connor helped. Went to yeah, him, of I course. Believe, yeah. Connor, uh, the league, hockey people in the league, NHLPA, they all got back again and said, "We can't have that yeah. atrocity that we had in Florida last <laughs> yeah. year." Yeah, we we'll throw a couple bucks at this thing. So good. Uh, We're so watching. We're I watching again. Are in. they doing? I'm embarrassed. Is it five on five this year? Have they said? Uh, I believe it's five on five. Is that, that is, is that accurate, Kipper? Do you know? Yes, because it's a draft, right? There's oh yeah, right. Two team so it's, draft. So it's, so it's five on five. Yeah. Now. They're doing hockey this I, year. Thank you. Good. Thank you for that. Okay. Yes. Uh, what's the deal? I'm, I'm not really up on this. Did the Washington Capitals officially say that they're moving to Potomac? I, I don't really know, Kipper. I, no. I I thought you would know this kind yeah. of thing. This not official, thing in... um, but they're gonna. It sounds like there's no option to like, yeah, I think DC was like, yeah, we'll do a $500 million reno. And they're like, that's going to be great for the lower bowl, but that's not going to cut it. This is a whole like Glendale yeah. type thing where there's, it's a real estate play. There's, you it, know, it, restaurants. It, if they're along the Potomac river, yeah. it will be spectacular. It's supposed to be awesome. It's four miles from their current home. Not a crisis. I did see that, you know, technically it's the suburbs and there's only a few teams in the suburbs and that hasn't gone well. Ottawa, Arizona, Florida, but you know, it's very technically the suburbs. They'll be fine. Okay. Uh, okay. No real shock. Uh, Alan Walsh, the agent for uh, David Perron, appealing the suspension. I'm only shocked because, you know, he did a six-game six suspendable thing. Right? Yeah, th that's it. You know, that's a really hard one to appeal. Yeah. It's like, What's uh, the case? Well, the case is other examples uh, where it doesn't it's look. It's just why him? Yeah. Why not my guy? Why my guy? Why not him? That's, but you know, the goofy part about always an appeal is it's a slow process. And is it, it takes not forever. To Gary? It's to Gary first, and then it's done with Gary, and then it comes back, and then they go find an independent <laughs> but that arbitrator. That's the one, right? That it took the length of his suspension to and rule to on. save. Like he may save one game. Yeah. If you're, if he's lucky, the decision. Often, like an independent arbitrator yeah, would come that, back. Well, that's what it's about. And he'd save yeah. what, 50 grand? That's what it's about. Getting that money. Get that money. That's okay. What they care that's about. fine. But you're, you're still out five games for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, would like, agree I was, that. I wasn't aiming for his jaw. I swear. Yeah. I, I didn't even see him there. Yeah. Like, exactly. I, it's a tough one to appeal. You took three strides, yeah. jumped. So, <laughs> okay. Anything else around the league? Well, I, I guess we, we just kind of got into the, the Connor versus Connor thing, but. 
No, no, I want the Otani now. We have five minutes. Uh, we got to do Otani. Okay, yeah. so uh, <sighs> I saw uh, our Ben Nicholson. Smith. BNS. Smith. The West End Weapon. West End Weapon. One yes. of the nicest guys in the world. Uh, tweeted him. out that uh, uh, our good buddy in Los Angeles now, yeah, Otani, you're has got an out clause in his deal that's around... Uh, personnel, management personnel. If someone, I don't know, gets fired or resigns or leaves. Part of like the trade you made. He can get out of his deal. That's baffling. Is is that how I read it correctly, Sammy? That messes up contracts for every team forever. If you can have a contract clause that's like, if I don't like what you're doing, I can leave. How is someone not, like, you know, I had to take a lot of crap from all the American baseball writers. Be like, this is good for baseball. How is this contract and this deferral and these these things where he's like, I get whatever I want at all times, right? And they're like, of course, Shohei. How is this good for baseball? I'm sorry. Like, okay, he plays for a premier team. That's that's it. This is a joke. Like, a oh, I, I think it's a joke, too. You no, know, it's embarrassing. Like, you're just catering it's too just, much. Yeah, to it's, it's uh, sure, he hit you know what? homers. It's, it's, like, he's it, not Messiah. It is, like, yeah. it is completely messing with the integrity of contract structure. Contract structure. Yeah. And, like... What was wrong with just, hey, you play 82 games, this is what we're going to pay you. But now it's so many of these things, and obviously they don't have a hard salary cap like we do in hockey. So you're going to find different ways to get out of the luxury tax, yeah, I think, in baseball, right? it's a competitive right? balance tax, yeah. But I, I, I think when, you're, when you start dealing with these side deals and now it's like what – are we going to get to the point where you're pay, a, a player's paying a team yeah. to, 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 to loophole all these things well, that are supposed to? Every team in every tax-heavy state is now going to be like, do we have to give deal, deals to the elite guys that say we'll pay you, know, you later, and, like when you're like, not here? For the Toronto Maple Leafs, mm. they use something that few teams can n- n- don't have the luxury of doing, and that is front-loading, bonuses. signing bonuses up towards yeah. 12 or $14 million. Guess what? No other owner has that cash. Yeah, to just say, and that is huge for the Leafs to use as a competitive balance to offset uh, state tax, saving another guy a million dollars by playing in Nashville or uh, Dallas, Florida. Dallas, yeah, Florida. Good for the team, right? Yeah. If you want to trade him later, he's but, already. But how got far lots are we going money? now? How far are we going to mess with that? Like we're not going to even hear about contracts anymore. So. This clause, Kip, is it about front office or is it player related at all? I, like I think it's probably player related too. It, it, it's this just, guy is such it's a, too much power. I I imagine a, like, a day though where it, he goes, "I'm not liking the way he's traded Beth or whoever." Just I'm out. name him pitcher, DH, and general manager. Yeah, he's just a, do it now. Honestly, what happens if he Mr. starts Pampered. playing okay Mr. for a bit? He's Pampered. thirty. He's so, still a back, human. Back in like, the back in the seventies. UCL, sir. Back in the 70s, what happened with a few teams, including the Philadelphia Flyers, was that the owner, uh, Snyder, wanted to keep salaries low. Mm. So instead of having it paid out in a contract, uh, they would start giving away, uh, like, boats and cars. Yeah. And word got around some guys were getting all these perks. Right. And other guys weren't. And the dissension was bad. Yeah. Well, it was just is well, not, now, now it's not a good is feeling. Making less than half of Otani's contract. How, how, how do the going, Dodgers feel about, about show coming in there and just having all this power? It's Agreed. not it's not good. Agreed. And it's like Mookie Betts is unbelievable at baseball. So Freddie when, Freeman, unbelievable baseball player, who are both there. And it's like, we're just as important to this team as you are, buddy. They're like, we disagree. You yeah. know, like So when someone gets moved down in the batting order, it's because I don't know. Someone, so what we're, yeah. Who else Sh- made that decision? Shohei? So what we're saying is keep him. Yes. Keep him. Maybe he, unless he opts out and comes to the Blue Jays, of course. In which case. <laughs> hey, guys, this is a hockey go. show. Uh, Stop making me talk baseball. Uh, you love the Otani talk. The Otani thing. You love it. Love All it, right. love it, love it. Our thanks to Jim Ralph in the first hour and Andy Strickland in the second hour. Five games on tap. Make sure you catch my good friend JB on Wednesday Night Hockey, Montreal and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Have a great night, everybody.